Hey, Boaz here with Next Pittsburgh. This week we've got another installment of Yenzer Backstage Pass. We're talking all things pickles. We've got Evan Pohl here, who's the head of sales and marketing for the Pittsburgh Pickle Company. So, Evan, you're going to show us how to make pickles. I'm going to show you how to make a pickle. All, all right. How we do in Pittsburgh? Okay. Well, let's follow you in here, and sure. I think there's like a lot happening. You explained to me that we've got a 2,000 pound box of cucumbers here, which were just probably picked a few days ago. Absolutely. So these would have come off a farm within the last week, roughly. Um, today, we are basically taking 4,000 pounds of cucumbers. Oh my gosh, Annie, you got to turn around here. <laughs> There's some crazy cucumber action going down. Uh, this is 4,000 pounds of cucumbers that will be washed, cut, and packed today. Um, currently going into our gigantic wash bin here. Um, as you can see, all of these cucumbers uh, are fresh market produce. These are some of the highest quality cucumbers in America that you can buy. And so Pittsburgh Pickle Company actually started so sort of by accident when you were trying to make fried pickles, right? Absolutely. So we started this venture in totality um, in 2011. We started uh, by three brothers were Pittsburgh natives, wanted to quit their jobs and open a bar. Um, so they opened the Beer Hive in the Strip District. If you haven't checked it out, great little place. Um, but they wanted to offer an all-natural fried pickle at the bar. So uh, their pickle options that they had just really weren't good enough. Started messing around with some pickles. Um, and before we knew it, we were making pickles in the back of our bar. Now, what is that device he's using right now? Is that like a, a cucumber hoe? I don't even know. <laughs> uh, I guess you could call it that. You know, it might just be a paddle. Uh, no official name for, for that tool, but um, clearly uh, just doing exactly what a cucumber hoe would, right? You know, just, just like a, uh, someone in a, a farmer in a field would use, you know? This used to be a ravioli factory? Yes, this is the old Victor Ravioli building for anybody who knows. Yeah. Okay, and it looks like they're... We're sort of finishing up the, uh, getting to the end of our cucumbers over here. And then they go into this bath, they take a little rinse, and then after that, it's time for the, the chopping process. Yes. Okay, Evan's getting the slicing machine going. So are we going to see cucumbers start spewing out the bottom here? Absolutely. So uh, you'll see this conveyor is already starting to take some of our cucumbers out of the water. They will go into this uh, cutting machine right here. Uh, and we will have cut cucumbers coming right out the bottom. Gosh, I love just watching those cucumbers go up that little elevator. Okay, so now they're tumbling down into the hopper, I guess? I, I guess that's what you'd call it, sure. Uh, they fall down into this, into this hopper, I suppose, come all the way down here, and then uh, right here you'll see them falling out. Yep. Oh my gosh, it slices them in like seconds. That's crazy. Absolutely. So as these buckets get more full, we basically just swap one out, put another one in there, and that's how we'll get 2,000 pounds of cucumbers out of this water today. And even though there's a lot of machines doing stuff here, there's still a lot of humans doing work too. Absolutely. So, I mean, we, we cut most of our ingredients fresh here uh, each morning when we need them. For example, today we, you came in, we were cutting a bunch of onions. So that's why our team was crying, I promise. Um, <laughs> You've got to move that bucket. I don't want to get in your way. This is like the, oh my gosh, it's like a magic trick, that swap. Look at that happen. Evan's a pro. There's a little key to the timing here, but you've been at it long enough. You get used to it. So today is a, is a sort of a cut and a pack day. Absolutely. And sort of they're every other days. And then tomorrow, that means it's a cook day, right? That, that's, that's the schedule as we have it right now. Some days we try to do it all on the same day. Uh, so I think we're going to walk through a little bit of the cooking process. Yeah, we'll have to use our imaginations today because it is a cut and pack day, but Correct. I guess tell us what we're looking at back here. Yeah, so the machine that you guys are looking at right here is our brining system. Um, we put a bunch of jars onto a conveyor uh, table right here. Um, and as the jars roll through this blue line that you can see in front of you, uh, they get a little bit of brine in every single jar. And that's how we fill them. Um, the cucumbers come down through this line and meet our capping machine right here. Um, every jar is capped with a ton of steam. I wish you guys were here on that day too. Um, the amount of steam this thing produces almost makes a cloud in this room. It is, it is crazy. But one of the reasons we're not there on a cooking day is because it gets insanely hot here. You're saying it gets over 100 degrees in here when you're working. Easily, and especially in the summer. Um, some days we've taken a, a thermometer and just held it in the air to say, you know, what's the temperature? And uh, we've recorded 160 in this building uh, on, a, on a cook day. So. 
are you not melting? That's just crazy. <laughs> now we are. That's the funny part. Yeah. But you know, we're the we're the team that's willing to do the hard work to to make a better product. You know, uh, you must love pickles a lot. <laughs> we we certainly do. Um, so yeah, you can see the the jars come down this uh, blue conveyor belt here. They meet our gigantic brine tanks right here, where we heat everything up, uh, and they go into a cooking tunnel where we blast them uh, with more steam that's uh, I think at least 180 degrees in that tunnel. Um, they then go to a cooling tunnel where they're hit with uh, some cooling mist uh, before going to uh, a bunch of air hoses to clean them off. They're labeled. Uh, they come on out and go to a finished product uh, pallet right after. So um, this is really an operation where we take a, a cucumber one day and we have it turned into a pickle uh, the next. And that is something that a lot of teams in America don't do. Um, it's a lot of hard work. Yeah, and you, you know, do, do sales and marketing, but also it's pretty often that you get pulled onto the floor and you're also making pickles, right? Well, absolutely. Um, even, the, even the business owners today are still on the, on the production floor pretty often. Um, it's a small business here, you know, everybody wears multiple hats, uh, everybody's got to be willing to help out and uh, we have a real nice team here that, uh, you know, is willing to put the hard work in. And, you know, I thought you were going to take us into the back office now and maybe we'll end with a, uh, a yeah. shot of pickle juice. A little bit of pickle juice, absolutely, yeah. Um, great for after a hard day's work. Um, pickle juice kind of mimics the properties of an all-natural alternative to Gatorade. Um, so even some athletes like to drink pickle juice after, say, a long bike ride, a hard workout, things like that. So naturally, um, you know, we've just done a hard day's work here. We have to end it with a little shot of pickle juice. And it's also uh, pickle juice. <coughs> Excuse me. There is, let's just say there's a lot of onion, I guess, and, um, and peppers. Garlic. Oh, yeah. Onion, pepper, garlic, uh, a lot of stuff that goes into these jars. I mean, everything is fresh um, and cut and basically spiced right here. So um, you get a lot of uh, a lot of fresh ingredients in the air. Yeah. When you come in here, you feel the onion strong. We were both sort of crying a little bit. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, you get used to it after a little while. You know, you, you work well with them enough and, you know, you, you never seem to have a problem after after a little bit. But I get it. Yeah. And over here, you also have the the pick elixir belt. I guess it, there's the, the contest every year at Picklesburg. Absolutely. So um, this is the, the pick elixir uh, championship belt. Um, every year we do a pickle juice drinking competition at Picklesburg, um, and we give this belt away to the winner every year. Gosh, okay. Will you do us the honors of pouring oh, us sure, two sure. shots of pickle juice? Absolutely. So this is the same thing the, uh, the pickle juice drinking athletes are drinking in the, in the competition here. Uh, this is our pick elixir. Um, just a bottled pickle juice. Uh, I, I shared with Boaz earlier just that um, we did a ton of work to actually make this taste like a pickle and not just be a water, vinegar, salt mixture. You know, that's what a lot of brine is, and we get it. Um, but we wanted something more, you know, when we sold it. So um, I hope you like it. <laughs> so you could also have, like, a pickle essential oil line where you have, like, oh, yeah. body sprays, other stuff. Absolutely. I mean, who doesn't love pickle? <laughs> sure. All right, Boaz. All right, well, thank you so much for the tour, Evan. Thanks for joining us, and we're going to drink some pickle juice now. Yeah, cheers. Thank you for being here. Ah, refreshing. <laughs>